Greetings and salutations. Welcome to another episode of 365 Days of Gaming. Appreciate you taking out time to check out this video. Feel free to like, subscribe, share, comment. Now we got to get into the episode. Now we've done a lot of classic games, games from the NES, SNES, uh, Genesis. We've done PlayStation, PS2, we've done 360. And I don't want you to think that like I haven't been enjoying the games that have come out over the past few years. You know, there's a lot of quality games coming out. I honestly feel like gaming is at a really, really great time. Like there's something literally any and everyone. And some games are pushing the boundaries of gameplay and immersion and all of those different things. Um, some games are legacy games and we're looking at, you know, entry number. 15, 16, 17, whichever. And there are games that have come out like over the past year that I think have been some of the best games that I've played in a long time. And I wanted to highlight one of those games in particular today, and that is Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart. Now, I'm not the biggest Ratchet and Clank fan. I've enjoyed several games in the series, but it's also not a game that usually I'm, you know, anticipating the next entry of. But for some reason, when I saw this game at E3, I was really intrigued. And we've been having talks, you know, amongst our friends about the lack of platformers. I'm a big platformer fan. I feel like when that genre is done correctly, it's one of the best. Um, you know, most of the games over the past 25 years have taken something from platform, even if it's an action adventure or open world, all of those things, I feel like, you know, got their roots back in the day from the Mario's and Sonics and all those type of games and I think Ratchet and Clank is a great evolution in that that type of game in the platformer genre I honestly think it was 2021's best game as far as overall package fun like the game is just fun it's not the most difficult you can make it more difficult if you want but it's a just fun game and Visually, it does one of my favorite things. It's not always about how great the game looks. I mean, it looks fantastic. It's 4K, you know, 60 frames, all of the cool things that all the kids talk about these days. Yeah, so don't let, let me make you think that it doesn't look great. It looks fantastic. It's one of the better looking games that have come out recently, in my opinion. But it's the way that they use the graphics to integrate the storytelling. So you get to customize your character, where you, whether you're playing a Ratchet or Rivet. And when you do those visual changes to the, the armor and equipment that you're wearing, which gives you different perks and different abilities, um, it changes what your characters look like in the cutscenes. And they do it in a way that's very visually appealing. So it's like your character's playing the entire time, not just, you know, you do all this stuff to your character to visually make him look a certain way and then you jump into the cutscene and you can tell when the game is you know getting ready to do that because it changes how your characters look this one keeps you immersed the entire time um, there are times where you're playing and you don't know it's going into a cutscene and they jump in and out of cutscenes between gameplay and it's really cool I, you know i think a lot more games could do a better job of doing that and this is a sony exclusive so in order to play this game you'd have to play it on the ps5 um, and also this is one of the games that I streamed and you know there may be a pattern with the series which pretty much most of the games I've streamed I'll probably be talking about in the series because I don't know I guess that adds a little extra nostalgia for me um, but I think you know from start to finish it's not the longest game I end up getting 100 percent without even really thinking about it which is also a testament to how fun this game is to where you're doing these collections and doing these side missions and everything and you're not you know, feeling like it's tedious, it just feels like a part of the experience and you want to do them, you want to complete them. Uh, sometimes games get over convoluted with missions and side quests and collectibles and it just becomes, you know, a chore. And this, the game never feels like I'm not playing because I'm not having a great time. It always feels like that the entire time from start to finish. Not necessarily a very long game. I mean, you probably could beat it in 10 hours. Um, I think I clocked in around 10, 12 mark, uh, maybe even more just because I did a little running around doing nothing. But there's there's so many different things within the gameplay as far as the weapons. Ratchet & Clank always does a great job of having all of these different cool weapons that you get to play with. And this one's no different. Um, 
there's enough for you to be able to max out these weapons without really putting in much effort. Um, but if you want to, you know, be a completionist and get everything to max level, you certainly can. It's, it's not that difficult to do. But it's cool to see when you change certain things on the weapons, how it immediately changes how the weapons work as far as fire rates, multiple projectiles, uh, longer, you know, sustained damage, things like that. It's just, it's really cool. And it makes you want to keep playing to try to get those weapons better, try to level them up to collect the different, um, different items you need to do so. Uh, I think the other biggest thing for me is the pace of this game. It's, it's the perfect pace for this type of game. Like I said, it, it feels like playing a Pixar movie. So you're just, you're going, you know, it's a pretty good story. It's, you know, it's not the most um, emotional story. It's not the most uh, cool story, I guess would be the phrase, but it's a really solid story. It's, uh, it's Ratchet and Clank back again. Clank trying to um, come up with a way to help Ratchet get reunited with his, his species, which He's like the only one in this dimension, but there may be other ones in other dimensions. And then, you know, Dr. Nefarious gets his grubby hands on the device and everything goes haywire. And it's got a, the right amount of comedy. You know, again, in my older age, <laughs> even though I'm not that old, you know, some of the corny stuff, it's, it's funny. And I think, you know, this is also a good game if you're trying to, you know, play a game with maybe you got you know younger kids this is something that we generally recommend at the shop to a lot of people when they ask you know what's a good game for them to play ratchet and clank is always a great choice uh, if you had a chance to check it out you know let me know how you feel about the game like i said this was my game of the year for 2021 um, i think it's just really good from start to finish i hope more people you know don't don't write it off as like this kitty game and really give it a shot because i think it's a really really great experience it's really good time and it's not that long of a game so you don't have to worry about a time sink with it um, but yeah let me know your thoughts in the comments appreciate you taking out time to check out this video uh, be safe have fun peace